fine so i have left this this expression here flux we had found out to be v dot s for a plane area across which the the water was flowing at the speed of v and for the first time we defined s to be a vector what kind of a vector a vector that is perpendicular to the plane of the of the area now what if what if my area what if my area area is not a plain one you understand so so maybe okay so it is something like this what if my area is something like this say say it is it is it is a it is a it is a hemispherical kind of thing bulging out like this okay now in this case what happens is what happens is we defined the area vector as perpendicular to the plane the trouble is this is not a plane it is a curved kind of thing right now what happens if it is curved then there is no no plane so so how do i take the perpendicular vector right here we had said that the area vector as we define it will have to be perpendicular to the plane plane of the area now there is no plane it it, it is a curvature like this right it, it it's curved so so what is to be done what is to be done the solution to that is if you if you take a very 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 small area element here then that looks like a plane area right do we get that it looks like a plane area let's try to understand like this this is this earth is a sphere right but if you if you look at this room and the floor of this room you are not able to see the curvature why because we are taking such a small area out of the whole that or out of such a big curved area that it looks like a plane area right so we are saying exactly that so maybe if i if i take this maybe if i take take this or wait take this i take this to be the area this one hold on hold on i'll draw it with green so if i take take this area this vector is perpendicular to it do we see that okay so so maybe if if this is the curvature i take this then then this this is the perpendicular if this is the curvature and it will keep on changing correct so what do we do what do we do we we divide the whole area into such small areas and let us say i call it delta s okay and let us say let us say this is how my 
my velocity vector is flowing so so the water is coming like this and and maybe going out like that coming like this and going out like that okay coming out coming in like this and going out like that coming in going out so 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 it is going across this curvature and what is happening what is hap what has happened i have divided the whole into such tiny areas delta s so what do i do i start applying this this on this so this is my velocity vector okay and what do i do at this point so 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 this is my velocity so i apply v dot delta s okay say say v1 dot delta s1 plus v2 dot delta s2 this is the dot product it is not simple multiplication plus v3 dot delta s3 plus dot 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 vn dot delta sn so i take these small areas which look like a plane i do the dot products apply this formula sum it up for the whole surface and that should give you the flux so ultimately it becomes summation vi delta si vi dot delta si summed over do we get that point do we get that point fine now let us try to understand this is this thing this comes handy in another case as well suppose suppose even when the area was a plane area even when the area was a plane area and the but the velocity was something like this the velocity was something like this okay the the velocity vector was not constant okay so so maybe it was going till here and coming out like this going till there and coming out like that going there coming out like that like that okay so what would have happened why because here the area vector would have been a constant but the angle that these velocity vectors were making with this they keep on differing so what angle should i take which angle should i take out of these here everything was pretty simple because because the whole of water was making the same angle the whole velocity was making the same angle all over this area it was making the same angle with the area vector here it is not here the angle is different now if you if you look closely it is this formula which will become handy here right it has to be this formula which comes handy there here as well and the most complicated case will be when i have when i have the area say 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 the area like this and say something like that and say okay and and it was say coming like that coming out like that say it was piercing it like this 
okay here too this becomes handy right now what happens in the limit i start shrinking this area to a very 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 small value which i call infinitesimally small this area in the limit delta s is shrunk to infinitesimally small shrunk to an infinitesimally small value and limit delta s tending to zero okay small value value which is which is called delta s tending to zero okay it tends to zero that means it is greater than zero but it is smaller than the smallest that we can even imagine so delta s tends to zero and limit delta s tending to zero is actually called ds and when that happens this summation does not hold so here it was i is equal to 1 to n maybe right now what happens as it starts becoming smaller and smaller the number of such area elements that i'll require to cover the whole surface starts becoming bigger and bigger you understand so earlier maybe 100 were covering the whole thing or 1000 then then if i if i reduce the size to 1 tenth it will become it will become if, if earlier it was it, it was uh, it was 100 then if i if i reduce the size of this element to 1 tenth it will become 1000 if i reduce it to further 1 tenth it will become 10000 right so if i start making it that small then the number of area elements becomes infinite correct it becomes infinite and this summation will fail to do the summation because because this is for finite number of area elements okay so your flux becomes your flux becomes e dot sorry it becomes v dot ds and you will have to take an integral over the surface so i write s here okay so it will become an integral the total flux across the surface becomes an integral so let us try to understand when there is a unique value for s and a unique value for v this holds when either the s or v have changed have different different directions then this works but for for finite number of area elements and and let us try to understand this is not that accurate okay so 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 this this or this both work when the when the area elements either the, the either the direction of the area elements change or either the either the velocity vector changes or both change correct but this is the exact one so we'll normally be referring to this okay we'll normally be referring to this and this you can understand as an intermediate as an intermediate in developing this okay and this will work even for this right even for this this is okay fine even for for that this is okay so this is the universal thing 
that is applicable to all the cases right it is applicable to all the cases that is what the flux of water is right now we'll move on to what is the electric flux 